Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be solving a polynomial equation. p of x is a polynomial and we are given that p of p of x squared plus 1 is equal to 9x squared plus 11. So we're going to be solving for p of x. We're going to find an expression for p of x. p of x is a polynomial so it's a special type of function. You know polynomials can be defined in so many different ways but they're basically sums of powers of x where the powers are all natural numbers. Zero through whatever, right? So, we can also call them non-negative integers. So, one of the things that's super duper important with polynomials is that they are nice functions, they are continuous, their graphs are smooth curves, they're differentiable everywhere, so on and so forth, right? Now, one of the things that's super important about polynomials besides everything else is that is the fact that they have something called the degree of a polynomial. What is the degree of a polynomial? We can go ahead and define it as the highest power of the variable if we are dealing with a single variable, such as, let's say, p of x, if it's written as x cubed plus x. The highest power available in this case would be 3, so the degree of p of x, which can be abbreviated as deg, can be written as 3. But if you have two or more variables, in that case, you have to kind of look at something else. You know, you have to look at the powers of uh, the two variables and you have to add them up as if they are the same. So kind of like replace y with x, what would you get? You would get x to the fifth and x to the second and the highest power would be 5. In other words, you add the powers of different variables. The numbers are never included, the coefficients are never included in the degree. In this case, degree of p of x. And if you don't like the fact that I use the p of x twice, I can go ahead and call this q of x. And the degree of q of x would be 2 plus 3, which is 5. Make sense? So this is how you define the degree. Now, why is the degree important? Because you can make a lot of good decisions once you have an idea about the degree. For example, for this kind of problem, you don't really know anything about p of x except its degree, what might it be, right? So take a look. We have p of x squared. Obviously, what happens to the degree of p of x squared? That's another good uh, question. Sometimes we're given equations like what is the degree of, you know, of p of x squared to the third power? times q of x to the fourth power if degree of p of x and q of x are given. Make sense? So those kinds of questions are very common and we could probably do those later. But for right now, let's just talk about it briefly. And if the degree of p of x is just n, uh, the degree of p of x squared is just going to be double. Think about it. If p of x is x cubed, p of x squared is just going to be x squared to the third, which is x to the sixth. You see, it just doubles the degree. So whatever the degree of p of x is, in this case, we kind of need to have an idea about the degree of p of x. Do you think p of x is a quadratic? Is Does it have a degree of 3? Whatever. Or is it linear or is it a constant? Obviously, p of x cannot be a constant because if it's a constant, then this is going to be a constant degree polynomial, let's say just 5. And then the sum is going to be a constant, and then p of a constant will be a constant. It's not going to be a variable like this, right? So p of x at least has to be linear. Can it be linear? You can guess and check, but let's go ahead and do it this way. If the degree of p of x is just n, then the degree of p of x squared is just going to be 2n, and something with a degree of 2n plugged into something of degree of 2n. So it's kind of like this. You have p of q of x, and the degree of q of x is n, and the degree of p is also n. What do you get from here, right? So think about it this way. If p of x is x to the fourth, and then q of x is 2x to the fourth, so p of q of x is just going to be p of 2x to the fourth, and that's going to be 2x to the fourth to the fourth, so the powers will be multiplied. So the degree of p of q of x is going to be n squared if each has degree n. Does that make sense? So you can make up a lot of uh, things about, not make up, but come up with lots of statements about the relationship between the degrees of these two things. To keep a long story short, the degree of p of p of x squared is just going to be 
n times 2n, which is 2n squared, okay? And in this case, that happens to be 2, so n squared is 1, since degree cannot be negative, n has to be 1. To keep a long story short again, I know I kept it too long, p, p of x must be linear. Think about it. If p of x is a linear polynomial, again, I'm not saying a function, but a polynomial, p of x squared is going to be quadratic. And then p of a quadratic, because p of x is linear, is going to be quadratic. Make sense? Okay, so here's what's going to happen. We're going to replace p of x with, so we decided, finally, that the degree of p of x is 1. So p of x can be written as a sub 1x plus a sub 0. You don't have to write it that way. You could also write ax plus b. This is being fancy with the polynomial terminology. So let's go ahead and use ax plus b. That's easier. So what is p of x squared? You have to replace x with x squared. So it's going to be ax squared plus b. That is, notice that the degree of p of x squared is quadratic. It's a second degree. And then when you p that again, sorry about that. Sorry about the expression. p of p of x squared plus 1, don't forget the 1, like I did, is going to be this. But what is that? p of x is ax plus b. So it will take the argument, multiply by a, right? And then add 1 or actually not add 1, add b, and it's going to equal 9x squared plus 11. Does that make sense? So again, p, here's the rule for the polynomial p. It's going to take the input, multiply by a, and then add b to it, because it's ax plus b. Remember, this is your new x. Okay, make sense? This is the new curly x. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Now we have the following, a squared x squared plus ab plus a plus b equals 9x squared plus 11. Awesome. From here, we get a system of equations. This is our constant term, which is equal to 11. And this is the coefficient of x squared, which is 9. a squared equals 9 gives us two values, a equals 3, or a equals negative 3. The second equation with a equals 3 gives us 3b plus b, which is 4b, plus 3 equals 11 which gives us b equals 2. So a equals 3 implies b equals 2. Nice. And then we're going to look at the next value. If a is equal to negative 3, that value is going to give us in the uh, constant negative 3b plus b, which is negative 2b. Negative 2b or not uh, 2b. That didn't work. Negative 2b plus a, which is negative 3, equals 11. And this means negative 2b b is 14, which means b is equal to negative 7. So a equals negative 3 implies b equals negative 7. What is that supposed to mean? It means that there are two solutions to our equation. p of x can be 3x plus 2, or p of x can be negative 3x minus 7. And you can test both of these values, but again, I'm going to leave that as an exercise. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.